Hello, my name is Joel and welcome to another episode of Puttering Outdoors. Today we're going to be, well, working indoors, inside the garage, but outside the house anyways. Um, today what I'd like to do is actually make a modification to my, uh, one of my workbenches. Uh, these workbenches, by the way, I built them out of scrap wood or leftover wood uh, when they built the garage. And this workbench here, after doing the ice resurfacer, I've noticed something that, um, you know, was kind of irking me a little bit. So I'd like to modify it a little bit just so that in the future it's going to work a lot better for me. So when I was using the bandsaw uh, with long stock, uh, the stock would actually hit the miter saw over here. So I would have to actually use the bandsaw on an angle so it wouldn't, so that the miter saw wouldn't interfere. So basically what I want to do is I want to add a wing to the end of my, you know, bench here so that the bandsaw sits at the perfect level where the stock will actually sit on top of the bench where this um, working platform is on the bandsaw itself. So I'll have some limitations on where I can put the bandsaw. Because the miter saw has this fence at the back, I'll have to make sure that the fence of the bandsaw doesn't go further back. So I'll have to make sure that it's level width or a little bit, you know, protruding in front. That way there, whenever I work with some metal, it'll be able to span a whole workbench as a platform to sit on and then I'll be able to cut with the bandsaw no problem. So basically at this end here, I want to make a wing, you know, that will sit a little bit lower and it's gonna stick out a little bit this way just because as you can see, I have it pretty much well lined up here. Um, it will protrude a little bit off the bench, but I'll, you know, make sure the plywood um, covers that area well and that the um, bandsaw will sit properly. I will not attach the bandsaw to that platform just in case uh, I want to cut something long with the miter saw that will reach out that far. Uh, that way there I can move the bandsaw if something happens that it's in the way. Uh, so let me go ahead and do some measurements and I'll start cutting some material to, to do that wing. And uh, it shouldn't take me too long but I only have a couple hours this evening. Uh, but we'll see how much we can do. Hopefully we can knock this out in one evening. Okay, I've cut my two um, triangle, I guess, pieces that's gonna go here. I cut them out of two by 12s because this is what I had. I think these are two by 12s or maybe two by 10s. This is what I had in stock. I mean, this, again, leftover stuff from the garage build. Um, I got two of these. I'll lay one here and lay the other one all back and I'll actually put, I'll put a, um, a half inch plywood on top to create the, the deck for the bands that sit on. Uh, I still don't know exactly how high I gotta put it. I'm gonna measure that out, put my lines in, and I'll uh, drill these in. I might actually uh, drill some holes so I can put the screws in uh, this way. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use live screws or just regular construction screws, but um, we'll see. Uh, I'll bring you back after I've done my measurements and figure out how high I gotta put it. I've measured it out and I got a line about right here and I hope that's the right height I pre I started my um, my screws just to make it easier I'll put more after this I'm not just gonna put two in there yeah here goes nothing Okay, let me drive a few more screws in here to make it a little bit sturdier and uh, then we'll add the tabletop. Okay, I've added a back plate here just to give it more support so I can actually tie it in in the, in the front here. And, um, and then the plywood that sits on top as well will have a little bit more support. Uh, so let's go ahead and tie that in right now. Thank <laughs> you. 
There you go, now they're solid. I'm also gonna add this piece here, like I'm over-engineering this big time, but might as well it be over-engineered than, than weak, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and tie that in too. And there's the platform, I just gotta screw that down. We should be good to go. Good enough for me. It's not 100% perfect, but um, it'll do. At least stuff won't be in the way anymore. I'll be able to cut the metal properly. I'll have a little bit of support. And they gotta work. So now let's pretend that I wanted to cut this uh, square tube stock uh, before I'd have to put this on an angle in order for it to, to fit properly on the bench. But now I can just lay it here, no problem. I can cut it to length. It lays on the bench even across the, the miter saw. and I'll have a lot more room to work. It frees up to the, this end of the, the workbench because I mean that saw was always sitting on there and now it's got its own little place. And like I said at the start of the video, if something happens that um, I want to cut a long piece of wood with the miter saw, I can actually take that down. It's not mounted to, the, to, to that little platform. So it'll give me a lot of versatility. That's a big word for a French guy. I'm gonna attempt. Not sure if I can do it, but I'm going to attempt to create a, or to convert this saw, this portable saw into a table saw. Um, I know you can buy some in the States, um, but for us in Canada here to order that from the States and bring it in, having to pay duties, having to pay the brokerage fees on the duties, I know those brokers fees I got dinged by them a couple times and and never again will I order from the states or well you know I'll try not to order from the states not unless I can guarantee that uh, the duties are already paid for um, whenever we bring in something from the states uh, using FedEx or UPS if there are duties on them um, FedEx and UPS will charge us brokerage fees uh, fees for them handling the duties and they, I think they start off at $40. So even though you got $2 of duties to pay, you still gotta pay the $40 brokerage fees. It's totally stupid, in my opinion. Um, but anyways, that's why I don't wanna order that product from the States, and I'm gonna try to make my own. Um, ideally, you would make it out of um, a flat sheet of, um, of steel. I don't have any here, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this this uh, three inch flat stock and I'm gonna put three of them together, weld it together and make a nine by nine table and find a way to mount it to um, to the bansa, to the portable bansa. Um, hopefully it'll work and uh, just like the one in the States, I'll make it so you can attach it to the device, so it'll stand in the device and then if you wanna, you know, take it off and use it back in the, its regular stand or as a manual bansa, you can. So um, I'm gonna take you along with me and uh, yeah, hope you stick around. Okay, I just cut three pieces nine inches long so I can butt them together, all three of them and have a platform that's nine by nine. Um, ideally it'd be 10 by 10, but cause you know, that's a five inch band saw, which means I got a five inch depth to it but you know nine by nine is gonna be good enough um, so now let me just um butt these together i'll weld them together and by the way i don't have any plans i just have a general idea of what i want to do and i'm just gonna wing it as i go just like every other project i do okay i'm just gonna soften the edges and i'm gonna grind down um the edges here where i'm gonna butt it up against each other just so i have a better place or uh, more weld surface uh, to, to weld 
because after that I'm gonna grind it flat because I want a, of course a flat um, um, surface to, to be able to use as a table saw. So let's go ahead and um, get rid of the sharp edges. When I apply the heat here, when it cools off, because of course, you know, something hot it expands, something cold it retracts, it's gonna wanna bend up the steel um, like this. And I, of course, this is gonna be um, the work table for the bandsaw. I want it to be as flat as possible. So I'm gonna drill in this, um, this half inch plywood into the workbench to prevent the steel from wrapping up. And, um, I, of course, I'll only um, weld, stitch weld here on this side, then I'll flip it over and I'll weld on the other side. And then the welds on both sides hopefully will be able to hold enough um, for me to weld the rest of the stuff without it, you know, distorting too much. So I'm just going to go ahead and tack this down for now. And hopefully that'll hold it pretty good. I got the wire changed in the, in the welder and I got the rest of this welded up. Uh, so now I'm just gonna use a flat disc to grind the welds flat. Um, I only need to do it on one side, but I think I'll do it on both sides just to make it look nice. I think it stayed flat, I don't know. I'll check it after the weld. I grind off the welds because the welds make it a little wobbly, so. Got a couple of pits where um, I didn't lay enough weld. Um, it's a lot better on this side, so I'll just use this side as my surface. It doesn't really matter as long as it's somewhat flat. Let's check to see how flat it is. Uh, it's bowing out a little bit this way. I might be able to bring it back by putting it in the vise. Let me try to do that. So now I gotta figure out um, where to put the holes to mount it and I gotta cut the slit for the, um, um, the actual band, the band saw, uh, to go through. So I'm gonna remove it from this so I can use it as a portable saw for hopefully the last time and then I can cut down the, the slit and measure where the holes go. Yeah, there's a slot right here um, where this um, little piece here slides in. It's got two holes and I got the, the hardware it used to, it used to hold this guide. But what I'm thinking is that I can uh, drill two holes in the, the platform I just made and um, attach it to this, um, hopefully, anyways. And then I should be able to um, attach the platform to that. Uh, I hope these bolts are long enough because I don't have any other hardware that uh, that's like this that can get recessed into into some. I'm, I'm not even sure if I have a, um, a counter um, a countersink to uh, be able to accept this but uh, I'll figure out something anyways now it's just for me to measure how deep I want this um, although it's nice that this can slide in and out so there is adjustment here okay I marked with a sharpie where the middle slit's gonna go for the band of the bandsaw to go down 
so I'm just gonna take the bandsaw and manually cut down there <laughs> how straight I'm gonna be I have no idea it's gonna be a tough task but um, anyways I'm gonna try it out the top part pinched down again and it caught the blade uh, I'm gonna have to find a way to spread that out so I can take the blade out and maybe cut a bit wider there uh, I didn't break the blade I got extra blades um, everything's fine just got to get a flathead screwdriver or something sticking in there Okay, I finally got the blade out. What I had to do is put another blade in the bandsaw and cut the top part just to, so it was spread out far enough. And I used the old blade that I had that had a kink in it, uh, if you've seen that in the previous video. Anyway, so now the blade, well, this is the, the good blade that just popped off. Now it fits down there pretty good. I went the whole way down with that blade again. With the, it's got a, I think it's got a, a wider curve. So uh, this one here fits better now. So it goes right down to the bottom, which is great. And the line is it's pretty straight, just at the bottom. I gotta go fix it a little bit, but uh, that's no problem at all. Okay, so now I gotta figure out where to put the holes um, so I can mount the bandsaw to display or display to the bandsaw. So as you can see, this is where I'm gonna mount it, these two screws here. And there's the saw so I got to measure how far from the saw this screw is both in height and in distance once I got that figured out I should be able to lay out where the two screws are uh, I'll just take out this little thing then I'll be able to uh, drill the holes and uh, see if I can mount it okay I figured out where the holes are supposed to go Might as well go ahead and drill them. Let me go get the hardware to see if it fits through it. I didn't have the exact drill size. It needed 1764 so I chose the next step down. Yeah, it'll fit through it. Now I just got to figure out if I got a uh, countersink that I can use. I found this rusty old countersink bit. It's from an old set that I used to have. It was at the bottom of the drawer. Um, not sure if it's meant for metal or just wood, but um, yeah, I'll give it a try. Let's see if it's going to disappear. Look at that. Wow, I'm impressed. Looks really nice. Well, I guess the next step is to see if I can mount it to the bandsaw. Okay, before I mount it to the bandsaw, I want to run a tap through this because one of the threads is really not good. Um, it feels like um, it got cross-threaded when, see this thread here, it goes in super easy. And the other thread, I, it's, I don't know. It's very grimy. It feels like it was almost cross-threaded at, um, at the warehouse. So let me try to figure out what thread this is so I can uh, put a tap through there and um, see if I can't clean up those threads. I found the proper thread. Man, these um, gauges are really nice. Um, if you can see, there's a bunch of different teeth on here. Um, and this one here, if you put it in you'll see that the teeth line up perfectly and on the back here it says uh, 1.0 so looking at my um, at my chart here it's an M6 1.0 so taking a M6 um, tap it fits in there perfectly so now I just gotta run the, this tap through the thread that's all messed up and it should you know see you can tell that it's it's just not right it should clean it up really nice. If 
feels much better. Now I think this was the good one. Trying out the bad one now. I could only go in three treads before stopping. Look at that now, it's going in straight through, no problem. Perfect. All right, next thing to do is to put this away. I got a habit of um, taking out all my tools and not putting it away as I go. And cause you know, I always think, oh, well I might need it, you know, a couple steps down the project. Then I end up with a, a really cluttered workbench. Um, is everybody out there the same way or? But I do clean up nice after the project's done though. That's one thing I do try to keep up anyways. Um, okay, let me go put this uh, tap and die set away and uh, then we'll try to put that on. Okay, I'm not sure what's the best way to try to assemble this together um, to be able to see the holes and put the plate and all that stuff. But yeah, let's just try it out. Sorry if I'm in your way. Do you mind holding this up for me while I am? Um, yeah, no. Okay, fine. That slot is not the, um, the cleanest, so it's kind of hard to slide this stuff. Oh, there we go. All right, I see one hole. I see one thread. Come on. Just a little bit more. Ah, too much. Oh, there we go. It's almost perfect. No, where's the Allen key? Should always try to make sure you got all the tools at hand before you start putting stuff together, right? Oh, we got contact. Look at that. Okay, there you go, that's solid. All I gotta do now is find out a way to mount this to the vise. And I'll probably just um, weld a, a piece of the same bar that I use as this down and I can just mount it to the, I just gotta make sure it doesn't interfere. So let me go set it on the vise, see how it all fits. But man, I like the looks of this. And then too, if I loosen these, these can slide down. So if I need more tray at the front, more um, bench at the front, I can uh, by loosening these up here. Let me try just to show you. That's the theory anyways. That's, that's what I thought about doing. Whether it works or not, that's a whole other story. So now I should be able to slide this forward quite a bit. So if I want, and then this is at the end um, of this slide. So I gained what, probably two inches, three inches, whatever, how many inches that is. Just a sec, I gained one and a half inches. Um, so yeah, anyways, I got a little bit more work here, a work surface. So yeah, it looks like it's gonna work. I just gotta figure out how to mount it. As you can see, here's uh, the slot where the blade goes in. This is underneath the table right now. I cannot mount it to the vise on a 90 degree angle where the blade is going to be 90 degrees just because the saw itself is um, uh, on a 45 degree angle. So I got to mount the, um, uh, the bracket that the vise is going to grip on on a 45 degree angle and that's what I did in here. So I just got it set up right now so I can just weld this together. And I'm not sure if I need to weld some little tabs that um, will prevent the, the saw to, to kick sideways or um, because on the, on the vise there's uh, little lips underneath the, the clamping jaws. So I might be able to, to weld a couple of tabs there so that it'll prevent it from, you know, um, shifting. 
Um, so first of all, let me weld these, uh, this together and then um, I'll um, investigate that, those tabs if I need to put them on or not. Let's see how it would fit in here. So it fits something like this. Uh, I don't think I need to put tabs. One thing left to do is to mount the saw to this bracket, put it in the vise, and I should give it a go. Um, I don't think I need the tabs on there. This holds really good. I mean, it's not bad, right? I think it'll do the job. All right, here's the first test of trying to install it. Just making sure there's a, lots of clearance. Oh man, that's solid. The only thing is that the trigger. Um, what I can do for now is just put a zip tie and then plug the machine in and out. But I think what I'll do, what I might do right now, just give me a sec. I think what I'll do is I'll plug it into a um, bar like this. And then I can just uh, flip the switch on the bar itself. Thinking on the fly here. So yeah, then I can just turn it on and off using this switch here. Um, let me put a zip tie on that. And I got these uh, zip ties that are um, reusable. Uh, so you can take them on and off which is nice because in case I want to switch this back to um, it being on its stand or a portable, I can definitely do that. Let me go get a piece of metal and see if I can cut it. It works. Look at that. Um, but normally this would not be used for box um, stock, it would just be used for flat stock that's easier to cut here and you can do some, uh, like it'd be easier to just, um, uh, so let's say I'd want to cut a notch in this, only this deep, then it'd be easy for me to just go in and, and cut the notch. Here, let's give it a... There you go, cut that notch no problem, man. I think this is a great, jeez, look at that, huh? look at the little slivers that I cut out. I think this is going to be a great addition. So yeah, so I think this is going to work really good. Um, you know, I, it, it exceeds my expectations actually. Uh, it was a lot easier to build. I thought I'd have to do some kind of weird mechanism in order to hold it in the vise, but, um, and it being on an angle like this is, is not bad at all. I don't. I don't know, I find like I got a lot of room and so, so yeah, th you know, thanks for sticking around. I hope, um, well, if you stay till the end, thank you very much. I, you know, I appreciate you guys watching and if you like this video, please like it and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good day.